Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Bells Will Be Ringing, and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page for additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 inch by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, fire red, green oxide, Mars black, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. Of course, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have a one inch wide sponge applicator. It's almost an inch wide, I think it's like seven eighths inch wide sponge applicator, which is not necessary, but I thought it'd be fun to use this for the bokeh dots later. And then I have three brushes for my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush, a number eight round synthetic brush, and a number two round synthetic brush. And I might refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, or I will just call them out by their given name. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have some kind of cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as some kind of towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout the painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using. It would be the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my number two round to demonstrate how to premix two custom colors. The colors we'll be using in this step are white, yellow, red, and brown. And I'm gonna pre-mix a light brown color and a uh, tan color. I have pre-mixed them on my palette here so you can see where I'm headed. So this one is the one that I'm gonna call my light brown. How I achieved that is yellow, red, about, I would say, equal parts of uh, yellow, red, and brown, and then just a touch of white. So the white is gonna help with the opacity, so it's not entirely see-through, and the yellow and the red is going to, in essence, kind of add an orange type of tinge to the brown. So this is where I'm headed with my light brown, spinning it around so I can make sure it's got nice and mixed in through there. And then the tan color, which is kind of like maybe a dark beige type of a tone. This is made up of the same color combination. So white, yellow, red, and brown, only this time it's much more white. So I'm gonna put my white in and there's gonna be a lot of white, a little bit of yellow, and brown, probably about equal parts of the yellow and the brown. And then a little red, not a lot of red because it'll turn um, pink really quick because it's such a light base. So just a little bit of red. Um, that'll help to, my yellow and my brown kind of makes a almost a greenish gold tone. The red will help to counteract that and keep it in my tan zone. So this is where I'm headed with this. Just mix it around spin it so it's fully mixed. And once I have this, 
And you're going to want to make quite a bit of the tan because it's going to, you're using it for the entire canvas or majority of the canvas. So that is my two colors. Once I've got those mixed, I can put my mixing tool away, take out my large bristle brush, and I'm going to start with my tan color. So I'm going to be applying this for the majority of the canvas, and then I will add my light brown along the edges. I know that I'm going to be using a, or applying a second coat onto my canvas, so I am not um, needing this to be perfect coverage at this point. I'm just really looking to establish kind of a lighter zone in the middle and then a darker zone around the edges. Um, so once I've got it into about here, then I can start picking up my, my light brown color. And you'll see this almost is a similar color to Burnt Sienna, only it's a little bit um, maybe lighter and a little bit more muted. So something like that and just kind of applying this all along the edges. Don't be concerned about a perfect blend at this point. I am using long kind of continual brush strokes to um, just to get it blended a little bit. Oh, I got a little bristle in my paint. Let me get that out. Oh, there we go. Um, so that'll help uh, prevent what I like to refer to as like cut marks, which just is what I refer to as seeing where the brush um, stops its, um, its trajectory kind of. And then I'm just gonna kind of get these to blend in a little bit. Again, doesn't have to be a perfect blend at this point. I did bring um, the lighter tone a little bit more towards the top of that center. And then you can just kind of use a light touch on your brush to um, blend them in a little bit, but again, it, it doesn't have to be a perfect blend at this point. I'm just trying to make sure that I get all of my areas covered and that I don't have any super difficult spots to contend with later. So that's where this light touch with my brush um, to kind of spread out any um, thick spots or get rid of any really huge cut marks in it. And then once we've got this done, we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint, I'm going to call it atmospheric dimension. <laughs> I'm going to be um, putting another layer onto this background. We'll do some out of focus sparkly bokeh dots later, but I want to make sure that I've got this background nice and finished before I do those. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors that I'm going to use are my tan, my light brown, yellow, a touch of red, and black. And what I'm going to do is I'm in essence going to be adding just another layer onto here. And then I'm going to, as I go farther away from the center, because I want the center to be the lightest, I'll use my tan in here. And then as I work my way out, I'm going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, adding maybe a little bit more glowy color. So maybe a touch of yellow here and there, maybe a touch of red. Um, and then as I get towards the edges, I'm going to use a little bit of black to darken up those edges. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step as well, because it will be much easier to put the second coat on. So I'm going to start with some of my tan and I'm going to just um, use that right in the middle, just allowing myself to get a really solid kind of color right there in the middle. It's kind of getting up middle towards top. So somewhere in through here. And then once I've got my area pretty well saturated, um, I'm going to start introducing other colors to it. My most dominant color that I'm going to be using in addition to this is my my light brown. So as I'm working my way out, if I want to say put a little more of like a little yellowy tinge in through here, I can pick up a little bit of my tan plus a teeny tiny touch of yellow and I can start to add this kind of glowy type of look out towards um, going further out towards the edges. Then I can go ahead and pick up my light brown without washing my brush. I'm using a circular um, kind of brush stroke as my dominant brush stroke right now. So it just allows it to 
have some airiness to it and um, give it a nice soft kind of um, appearance. So that looks pretty good. I feel like I have um, eraser crumbs down here. I've got to blow my easel on. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> it was picking up on my brush as I was coming down. So I got little, little crummies on my painting because of it. Anyways, so um, I'm using this circular brush stretch just so it looks nice and soft and I can blend it into that previous area. So I can just kind of take as my, um, as, as I'm running out of paint from like these colors, I can back it into that lighter area in the middle and that gives me this nice kind of soft transition. So I can use that thought process everywhere. So if I wanna on this left hand side, say add maybe little orangey or reddish tones, I can pick up a little bit of my tan plus a tiny touch of red, just itty bitty bit on the tip of my brush and I can start kind of introducing that into the area over here. If you wanted it to look more orangey, you could say pick up a tiny bit of red and yellow on your brush, just a little dot of each, and that'll give you like an orangey type of hue. So you can really play with the, um, the little um, kind of glows within this uh, atmosphere by just picking up a tiny dot of something else. For this upper corner, I just picked up my uh, light brown. And again, I'm just using this circular brush stroke, kind of backing it in towards that wetter area in the middle. I'm going up in this top right hand corner with some of my tan, or excuse me, my light brown, just to make sure I have a second coat up there. I'm gonna get that a little bit darker in a minute with um, some black, but I just kind of wanted to get this in place first. As I come down here, I think I wanna pick up a little bit of my tan plus yellow. I liked how that kind of, um, that color was created in through there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of it cause I'm digging how it looks. So if you find a color that really speaks to you, just go with it, put it, put it as many places as you want. You don't have to um, go with what exactly I'm doing. You can certainly add more. I also like this red here and kind of want to tie it over here. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow and red on my brush at the same time. And I haven't washed my brush. So this will um, kind of allow the remnants on my bristles to just kind of blend in with the other, um, with the other colors that I just added to it. Coming over here, again, I'm really digging that, but I think I wanna go a little darker here. So I'm gonna pick up my uh, light brown plus a tiny touch of yellow and red. So all three of those colors are on my brush right now. And then just kind of use this circular brush stroke and blending it. My bells are gonna go here. So this area doesn't have to be perfectly blended, um, but I just picked up some of my uh, tan just to get a little blend going so I don't have just a, a stopped spot. This way, I, if I do have these little peekaboo areas around the bells, they'll be fully covered. And then down in this bottom left and right hand corner, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my light brown just to fully um, get a full coat on. I will add the black in a minute, but I just wanna make sure I've got my full coat on here before I start adding uh, little bits of black and I'm gonna just look around those little crummies off of there. I feel like I could use a little bit more up and through here. And then once I've got uh, this like this, I'm gonna start adding a tiny bit of black into these corners. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and my tan. So I'm just going a little kind of, you can't really see the, I mean, uh, light brown. Uh, you can't really see the light brown here because it's the same colors as the remnants on there, but I have a little dot of black and a little dot of my light brown. You can really start in any corner. I think I'll start up here in the right uh, upper corner and I'm just gonna kind of blend it in. So I put it up in that right hand corner and then just kind of blend it back into this lighter area. If you get about this far and you're like, oh, I have too much paint on my brush, just give your brush a squeeze in your paper towel and that'll allow you to keep those colors on your brush, but take away any uh, uh, extreme excess that you might have. And that's looking good up and through there. I'm gonna do the same thing down in the bottom right and left corner. So touch of my light brown, touch of black. Gonna go down, mm, 
think I'll, I think I'm going to go down the bottom left. I, I want that one dark, but not as dark as these two. So I picked up my black and my light brown and just going to allow this to blend in again, give a little squeeze so I don't have too much on my brush. And you, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my light brown just to get that to blend just a little bit more. And then I think I'm going to darken that bottom right corner with the excess that's on my brush right now. So just kind of put a little bit in through there. And if I wanted it to go darker, I certainly could, but I'm thinking that I'm digging that, picking up a little bit more of my light brown just to blend this out a little bit more. And then I would just fiddle with it. You can certainly do another layer if you wanted to. Let it dry, see if there's um, any little bits that you want. But we are going to do the, the out of focus bokeh dots um, in the next step. So just know that if you have little areas that are not perfectly blended or you feel need a little bit more disguising, <laughs> know that you'll be able to do that in the next step with those little bokeh dots. But any little spots that I'm picking up a little bit of my tan plus my uh, plus my uh, light brown. Just get this to blend out just a little bit, and then you just fiddle with it. I just want I'm I'm actually going to wash my brush and just put a little dampness on it just so I can soften out a couple of these little spots. Sometimes if if you are just working towards that final blend. You've got lots of colors that are still a little damp. You can put a tiny bit of water on your brush, on, uh, on your um, cleaner brush, and just kind of with a very gentle touch, you can blend out some of these little edges um, to get them just a little bit softer looking. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my sponge applicator <laughs> for the next step. So once you've got uh, your background in a nice soft place for your own visual pleasure and you're enjoying the way that it's looking, you can put this brush away, take out um, some kind, you could even use, if you don't have a sponge applicator, you can just use a small uh, bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna make out of focus dots, which I like to call bokeh dots, because <laughs> bokeh means out of focus and these are circles. So I'm calling them bokeh dots. I'm gonna be using my uh, sponge applicator, which again, you could use a, like a bristle brush to do the same thing. I'm gonna be taking it and kind of spinning it um, to make my circular marks, but you can do that again with a small bristle brush. I do recommend that your canvas is dry. I will also be using my number two round two pre-mix a couple of colors as a mixing tool and I'm going to be doing some little tiny sparkle dots all over the place. The colors that I'm going to use in this step are white, yellow, red, light brown, and tan. And if I use any other colors I'll let you know. So I'm going to make myself, uh, I'm pre-mixing myself two more custom colors which I have magically done on my palette so you can see where I'm headed as I demonstrate how to mix them. So this one here I'm going to call light yellow. All I did for that one is I mixed yellow and white to get a, like a light pastel type of yellow color. Then the next color I've got is what I'm going to just call orange, even though it's like a light peachy kind of orange. How I got to that is yellow with a tiny bit of red and white. And if you find that yours is too yellow or too red or you want it a little bit more muted, you could always add a touch of your tan or your light brown to it. So you could take a touch of tan because there's a little bit of brown in that and that'll just mute it so it's not so in your face vibrant. So that's that color. It will dull down when it gets put on top of these colors uh, because we're going to be putting it on in a thin uh, way so it's almost transparent but you know, you can play with the tones there. So once I've got that, I'm ready to start making some bokeh dots. <laughs> so I'm going to be using white, these two custom colors, my tan and my, um, my light brown and maybe yellow and red in conjunction. So if I take, I'm going to start with my light yellow and I just put a little bit on 
my applicator. I don't need a lot of paint on there. And I can just sit here and I can say, okay, I can just spin it to give myself a small polka dot. Or if I want a bigger one, I can put it flat into the surface and then just kind of move it around in a circular type motion. And that gives me a little bit bigger of a polka dot. I can, without washing my brush, I can switch colors or I can add a different color. So I could just pick up a little bit of white on my brush. Now I can add brighter ones. So something like that. So I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of white. That's way too much paint on my brush or on my tool. So I'm gonna wipe it off on the side of my palette. And then the trick again is just very little bit of paint on your applicator. You can put as many as you want. If you want them smaller, just spin it. If you want them bigger, you can kind of work it around in a circle and that'll give you a pretty, pretty nice one. Um, I'm gonna do, oops, that was a little awkward. And they don't have to be exact circles. If you watch me do, oops, that's gonna, we're gonna make that one bigger. Um, if you watch me to do polka dots on other videos, I don't use this applicator. I use my bristle brush most of the time and I usually put them with really soft edges around them. Um, that helps to avoid the necessity of them being perfect. So you can certainly make yours whatever way that you want. So that's some good um, white ones and light yellow ones. Now I can just pick up some of that uh, light orange color. You can do them anywhere you want. So if you wanna stick one down here, stick one down here, anywhere. They can be, again, smaller or just move it around a little bit and that'll make it a, a little bit bigger. You can also overlap them. So as they're starting to dry, like, I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show you the overlapping in a minute. Mine are not ready to overlap. You'll want them to be kind of on the drier side if you want to overlap them. But again, I'm not using a lot of paint. So mine is, um, I wouldn't say necessarily totally transparent, but it is definitely um, a little bit thinner. So I can kind of see that color underneath. As I'm going up into like these darker areas, I can certainly continue to use this color. Um, but if I wanted to, in these darker areas, I could employ my light brown color. So I know that that will, you'll be able to see that on top of um, that darker, the darker areas. So I didn't wash my tool. You could certainly wash your tool, but I'm gonna just give it a little brush off of on my paper towel to get those um, lighter tones off. But you can see even with um, that light brown on top of these darker areas, you can see it. You could even pick up a tiny bit of red. Again, I picked up a tiny bit of red and then I'm just wiping it off on my paper towel. So if I wanted a little red one or a redder one, I can use that. So you can certainly, you know, just have fun with, with the different colors, put them off the side of your canvas. You can put them, you know, anywhere that you want. Or if you wanted, say, a little more yellow, I know that this red is gonna dominate everything I do from here on out. So I'm actually gonna wash my tool. So sticking it in my, in my water cup, pushing it to the bottom, and then I can just uh, lift it out and give it a squeeze in my paper towel. That should get the majority of that red off. That worked. It's still dirty, but it's it's not reading as super red right now. And then I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my light yellow plus yellow. So light yellow plus my deep yellow. And this will give me more a little bit more vibrant yellow dots. So again, you can certainly have fun with the intensity of those colors. You can, you know, use more of your orangey kind of color if you wanted to. I'm gonna to start to kind of overlap these and you'll see as I overlap them, let me just see if that's dry. That's dry enough. So if I wanted a kind of a fun overlap one here, I can take this and allow it to overlap where you can see that other one underneath. That'll give you a fantastic um, realistic kind of look to it where those those polka dots are just kind of playing off of one another. And of course, you can have as many as you want and you can go fast, you can go slow, whatever whatever you wanna do. I do wanna put some lighter ones, so I'm gonna pick up some more white so I can have maybe a couple of really bright ones happening in through here, maybe, maybe one 
is overlapping this one. And again, whatever you want as your um, bokeh dot display is totally up to you. You can use your tan if you wanted to. I just picked up my my tan color and again as many as you want they can be anywhere they can be everywhere they can be nowhere whatever you want to do it's just you know your your own kind of display of these fun out of focus little um, holiday sparkles in your in your scene and then once you've got enough of those on there if you're feeling like you want to put more um, shine or more uh, information to it you can certainly that was a little I, these are a little thicker with their paint so I'm just gonna kind of dot them out um, you can use your number two and put a whole bunch of little sparkle dots so using the same colors I can I can take um, my number two brush I just picked up a little bit of my light yellow and I can put all these little tiny sparkle dots all over the atmosphere. So this again is just going to say that there's lots of little twinkles. You can, you know, I'm doing my light yellow right now, but I can certainly, I'm, um, I'm going to use the other colors too. I'm kind of avoiding this area up in through here because I'm going to have um, some of my Christmas tree decoration kind of leaning over here taking up most of this spot so that's why I'm not really doing much over there. I'm picking up some of my light orange color now and making some of these little sparkle dots with that. So again you can see I'm just kind of having fun allowing myself the liberty to just you know explore my sparkle making <laughs> um, fun and you can even put it in front or behind your your little glow dots and then you could even pick up some tan or some of your light brown and just continue to make as many little sparkly marks as you want and then once you've got this done um, we are going to be using I think we're going to use our drawing utensil for the next step so I might make a couple more little sparkly marks Maybe I might make a couple more bokeh dots, not sure yet, <laughs> but if you want to, you can certainly do that. And then you can put these, this brush and whatever applicator tool you were using for your bokeh dots away, take out something to draw with, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is drawing an outline for the bells and the ribbon. I'm going to be using a white piece of chalk to draw for myself, but you can certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers. We'll connect those markers, and by the time we're done, we'll have some nice, large, basic shapes that we'll be able to use during the painting process. So I'm gonna guide you to find yourself the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, that falls somewhere in this vicinity. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the left of that about almost halfway to the edge of my canvas so if this is about halfway I'm a little shy of that so somewhere in this vicinity is where my first real marker is gonna be I'm gonna guide you we're gonna do the bells first I have three bells you can certainly have as many as you want um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you probably three markers for the first bell and then the other bells are going to be similar in shape. So this is going to represent the top of this left bell, which is going to be in front of the other two bells. So whenever I'm do drawing objects that are similar in shape and attributes, I usually draw the, f the front one first because then I can just draw portions of the other ones behind it. So the front one is the one over to the left, so that's where we're starting. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom of my canvas and come over to the left about three inches and up about three inches. So somewhere in through here is gonna be my next marker. Then I'm gonna come over to the edge of my canvas at that height come up about an inch and then back in almost two inches, maybe about an inch and three quarters. So I just put two markers that are kind of diagonal from each other. These are about five and a half inches um, away from each other. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this marker to here and here to here with the shape of a bell. So you can certainly make yours any kind of shape that you want. Um, but I'm going to take mine, kind of bubble it out at the top, dip it in a little bit and bring it to here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Just bubble it out just a little bit, bring it in a little bit, and then bubble it back out a little bit to here. I'm now going to take these two markers and connect them with a downward curve. So a downward curve, something like that. And then I'm going to take from these two kind of corners and do an upward curve. So something like this. So that just created the inside of the bill. I'm going to do um, two more that are similar in shape to the hat. And I'll tell, I'm going to do um, the, the one to the right of this one. I'll give you markers where it's kind of under or goes under the other one, this one. So I'm going to go almost halfway from the top to here. So about here and over to the right, maybe a little bit higher than halfway down. And then down in the bottom portion, I'm going to come in here maybe about an inch, inch and a half. <clears throat> so that's kind of the equivalent. This one's going to be a little bit lower than this one. So however high you did this one, that's about as high as you want to do the other one. So you can use anything as your measuring tool. So if I use my brush as a measuring tool, I can see I did this one about this high. They don't have to be symmetrical, but if you want them to be, you can do a measuring um, task like this. And then this one I'm going to have kind of tipped a little bit like this. So I'll put my top right here. I know how long it's going to be right in through here. And then you could do the same exercise for the width of it. So this little width right here, however wide you have it, you can go um, you know, somewhere down at the bottom like this. I'm going to make mine tipping in the opposite direction. It's tipping this way. And that gives me these two corner markers. So now that I, I know that, I can take from here. I'm going to bring it over in a little curve and then bring it back like that. This one's going to hide behind here. And then from here to here, I can connect the, that with the under curve and then with the over curve. Well, I could close this little gap off here too. <laughs> and this could be connected with the over curve, something like that. These ovals can be different shape or different um, thicknesses because of the um, angle that the bell is at. So these don't have to be exactly the same. So something like that. And even it could be a little bit shorter the entire height simply because just for per, from perspective purposes. So the next one, the top of it, I'm going to guide you where to the, where the top of it is going to be. If I go to the center of my canvas and go up about an inch and over about a half of an inch, that's where the top is going to be of this one. And then it's going to meet this um, bell somewhere in this vicinity and then right down here at the bottom like that. It's the little corner is hidden behind this one. So again, you can use similar measurements. Oh, well, first I need to see how tall it is. So here's my, here's my height. I can take it, this one's gonna be at an angle this way and I can make my little marker. Well, it's gonna be right on a polka dot, so <laughs> something like that. And this one, of course, again, can be a little bit shorter or taller and then my width I can take like this, and then if it's going to hide behind there a little bit, maybe I put it over here. So this would be somewhere behind here. Then I can take from here and give myself that profile, give myself the profile, connect here with my under curve, and then here with my over curve. And again, you can certainly modify them whatever way you want. I need little hooks at the top. so. First, I'm going to put a little like bump at the top. So I'm just going to kind of put one little bump, just a decorative kind of brass bump, and then a little circle, a little circle, a little circle. Then I'm going to put my bow on, and then we'll connect these to the bow. So the bow you can have wherever you want and whatever size. But for me, it, may, it makes sense if the center one is kind of the one that is um, like gravity is totally taking over from the bow. So I'm going to put mine, the center of my bow kind of above the center of my first one. And I'm just going to give myself an awkward like 
square type of shape. That'll be where the knot of the bow is. And then I'm going to take it out with the two side ribbons and then the, the tail ribbons. The width of my ribbon is about seven inches. So if, if half of my canvas is 10 inches, it's a, like three inches less than that. So if you're working on a different size canvas, know that I am less than half the width of my canvas for the size of my bow. Just give you a little idea there. So from my little awkward square here, I'm gonna take um, just a little bit below the top right corner and bring it up like that. And then I kind of give myself a little um, curved mark like that and then bring it in, but not to the bottom. So just a little bit above the bottom like that. And I'll do the same thing on the left hand side. You can make them look different. Don't, don't make them, it will actually look a little better if they don't look exactly the same. So something like this will work. And then I'm gonna do the little ribbons out the side. So those two are gonna come out from this knot. So I can take from just, you know, just above the corner of that knot and it, it's gonna tuck behind here. So somewhere in through here, I can take this and just give myself a fun kind of end to the ribbon. And same thing here, it's gonna come out this little corner and then it will peek behind, or um, hide behind that part of the ribbon there. So I can take this now and just give myself whatever kind of fun end I want for the ribbon. And then I can take and just guide a couple of little um, strings to the bells. So the front one, or the center one, I can just kind of do that one almost straight down. And if you want it to look like they're in motion, when you do the um, the line for these two, just give it a little curve. So I can take it from here and like that. So that'll make it look like it's in motion. And like this, maybe I do something like that. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. I'm gonna be using my number eight round brush for the next step. So you can make any little adjustments that you want and then get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat of the ribbon, the bows, and the pine um, branches from our tree. I'm gonna use my number eight round brush to paint. The colors I'm gonna use are black, green, red, brown, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark red and a gold color. We'll use those as our base coat for our bells. We'll use black in here, and then we'll use a combination of green and black up for our uh, pine needle branches. So I have, I'm gonna use my number two to demonstrate the mixture of the custom colors. I have already made them on my palette here. This one here is my dark red. How I achieved this is just red and brown. So red with a little bit of brown is gonna give me this nice dark, almost like a maroon. Um, so I'm gonna just call it dark red. This will be the base for our ribbons. And then our gold is gonna be the base for our bells, which I have right here. So this color is made up of brown, yellow, and just a tiny bit of white. So just a little bit of white, and then I just mix them together. I need a little bit more yellow there, just so I can show you out here. There we go. And then we're gonna use this color, like I said, as the base coat for our bells. So once I have that, I'm ready to start painting. I'm gonna first paint these undersides of the bells with black. So I'm taking my number eight round, and I'm just gonna paint the inside the bottom portion with black paint. We'll put all kinds of fun details on it in a little bit, but this will just get us started with a nice shadowed inside portion of the, um, of the bell. And then I'll do that to all three of them. No fancy brush stroke here, just getting the paint on, allowing for it to cover that entire area, but still knowing that I have another um, step to this um, section that will make it look a little bit more realistic, but this just helps me get those nice deep tones in that specific area. And then just doing the same thing for this one. And you can see my all of my ovals are slightly different in, um, 
in their size and that was just to show the different angle in which the bell is kind of swinging. So you could have these in a very static position. Maybe you put them positioned like hanging on a, on a door or you know you can put them anywhere that you want. Um, but maybe mine are in a Christmas tree and maybe the cat has <laughs> found its way into the Christmas tree and they have all of a sudden started moving. So that's, I was thinking that, that, that they would look pretty cool moving. So <laughs> then I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up that gold color. So wash my brush, pick up my gold, and then just paint this on here. I do know that this is gonna, um, my gold is gonna be a little transparent in uh, color, which means it's gonna show some of the background through it, which I'm okay with. This again is just the base coat for it. Um, that will often happen with colors that don't have uh, fantastic opacity to them and my yellow and my brown which is what I used to make this gold do not have great opacity to them so this is going to provide me with my base coat and then as I layer on the future layers it will it will solidify <laughs> I'm gonna take this and just kind of give myself that coat again not worrying about it being perfect um, just putting this little bump in through there. That'll be the top portion. And then when I get to the sections of the bells that touch each other, I'm gonna leave a little, oh, I must have black on my brush there. I just got a little release of black into my um, bell, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the evidence of my chalk mark on the areas of the bells that meet each other, just so I don't lose um, the shape that I wanted with them. As I get towards uh, this bottom section where I just have a little sliver of the bill to do, I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush to get the paint over to that section. And if you um, did as I did and painted over <laughs> some of your favorite polka dots, you can always paint more of those later too. Um, I have one right here that I'm going to be hiding almost completely and I really liked that dot. So I added another one here, but I might add more. I might add more once I see what it looks like when I'm done. I'm adding, I'm covering a couple of nice bright ones down here too, but that's just the joy of doing, oh, I still have, I must have had just a good amount of black on my brush here. No worries. Um, the um, that's the joy of kind of painting in layers like this is I, I paint in layers like this so I don't have to work around certain objects um, later on in the painting process because to me it's a little bit easier to do it this way but when I do it this way sometimes I I paint things that I wish I could save <laughs> like some of these really cool polka dots that are underneath here but you know I can paint more if I want. So now I'm gonna wash my brush and then I'm gonna paint my uh, bow. Let's see if I can squeeze out the, see I still had some black in my brush there, but that's no worries. I'm gonna uh, now pick up my dark red and I'll paint my bow with the dark red. So again, this is, um, I'm gonna leave little bits of my, of my guideline where I feel that it's necessary to leave it. So on these edges over here, it might not be mess necessary unless you're like I am where I sometimes tend to um, make my objects grow <laughs> as, the, um, as I go through the painting process if I can't see my line, but you could certainly, you probably have better control than I do. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this side over here. Oh, I could have done these little tops with my gold too. I'll get to that with a smaller brush later, I guess. Um, and then I am finding I'm using a little bit of a purposeful directional brush stroke on here. I don't think it's entirely necessary, but um, if you want to just kind of go with the, what would be the grain <laughs> or the direction of the ribbon up and through here, I don't think this matters. But again, try and keep the, uh, the profile of it a little natural um, so it's not just a square up and through here 
that'll make it look a little bit more uh, realistic if you're going for the realistic kind of thing and then up into here just bringing my dark red all the way to my um, outline but still leaving a, a tiny bit of that outline <laughs> I just have a habit of doing that because I I just know for me that I tend to paint outside my lines or again make those objects a little bit bigger and of course you could change up the color of this ribbon if you wanted you could maybe make it green or polka dotted or maybe you don't even put a, a ribbon up here you could put anything like just another bell or a, a different kind of holiday bobble if you will and then just bringing this right to here so once I've got that on there I'm going to wash my brush and then I'm going to do the base coat for my um, pine tree. I'm going to, or the, the like Christmas tree part. I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to use a combination of black and green. And I'm just going to be very carefree about this, um, knowing that I want there to, the, the main focus is on the bells, but I, I want there to feel like um, we're in a kind of an evergreen type of, um, tree so I'm gonna just kind of do like a, a branch and then pull out these little um, pine needle type of um, marks so just maybe just pull this down in through here I want to have a couple maybe one kind of coming down in through here and I'm not um, over painting or um, blending too much just kind of allowing for the essence of um, like these edges. I'm gonna do another step to this, but this just kind of um, allows me to know where where I want these, um, these branches to go. So something like this. And again, just I'm thinking little pine needles. So I'm just doing that stem and then just bringing out these little uh, short needle type of um, marks and they're going to overlap so maybe I put a little bit darker up and through here I'll put some brighter stuff on top later maybe this one kind of comes down in through here and then just kind of again just little pine needly type of brush marks something like that and then I think I want to do one more maybe this one kind of comes farther out over in through here and you could certainly use a smaller brush for these little um, needles, but I feel as though I'm going to be doing another um, step to this. So if I if I feel that I want a little bit more detail to it, I can certainly add that in with a smaller brush um, on a future step. But I'm just going to kind of get these on here. I think that looks pretty good. And then maybe just pull this up just a little bit more so they overlap a little bit. And then we're going to be using our, um, I'm going to actually later I'll do this, these little guys with my smaller brush because I didn't want to use the bigger brush on these. So I see that the chalk mark is here, but I'll hit those with my smaller brush in a, in a future step. And I think that, that that probably does it for this. So I'm going to use for the next step, I'm going to use my, um, I think I'm actually going to use this same brush for the next step, my number eight round. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the next step to the bells and we're gonna put the base coat on the berries. So I'm gonna have a couple of berries in my tree just to help complement my red tones. I'm gonna to be using my number eight round brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are gold, red, yellow, white, and dark red. And maybe a little bit of black too. So what I'm gonna do for the bills is I want the insides to have a little bit of shine to them kind of down at the bottom side of them. So I'm gonna be using some of my gold um, and maybe a little bit of yellow and red to help make them look a little bit shinier. And then on the top part of the bells, I wanna add some shine to them. So I'm gonna be adding these bright kind of highlights um, on this upper side and then I'll add like reflective kind of 
um, shadows, if you will, on the darker side. So I want them to look shiny. So to make them look shiny, all I need to do is paint the paint reflections of the colors that are around. So I can use my red and put a little stripe in there. I can use black because there's probably black tones in the Christmas tree. I could use green if I wanted to, which I might. Um, but I'm going to start underneath here and we'll just work our way to the harder stuff. <laughs> so underneath here, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gold and start to put that kind of on the bottom side of these bills. So something down on the bottom side, down in through here. This is just going to get the, um, the tones of the gold that we have up above to start um, reflecting or showing on this underside. You can get it to just kind of blend up into that darker area. So something like this. And then just blending it out with the tip of my brush, just allowing it to kind of blend into that darker area. So that'll start that out. While that's kind of settling for a minute, I'm going to go up top and through here. So on, I'm going to put the brightest stuff on the right side and kind of my darker, more interesting tones kind of on the left side. So I feel like I would like to start with just another layer of my gold on this left hand side. So I just picked up the gold and I'm just kind of putting another layer on here so I can um, know that it's not too transparent anymore. I can also kind of bring this around the edges if I feel um, it would benefit me. I could bring it right to the edge and through there. And again, so I'm just kind of starting with this second layer of gold to give myself a real good jumping off point um, in making this color nice and believable. So just bringing this over in through here and just a little section down in through here. So again, nothing. I'm not doing anything right now other than painting a second layer of gold onto here so I can get um, some good coverage. And as I build my bright stuff, this will shine through because it's nice and gold. It's, I, I do love making kind of these metallic looking paintings without actually using metallic paint. I love using yellow and brown to make this believable looking gold. You can make brass, you can make silver. You don't need metallic paint to get a metallic look to your painting. So it's just a matter of understanding a little bit of the color theory behind it and how to create those tones. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. While that's drying, I'm going to go up top to do my, put my berries in place. So I'm going to use my uh, dark red. I just washed my brush and I'm just going to sporadically put some circle shapes in here with my dark red. You can really put as many as you want. You can put just little tiny ones. You could overlap them. You could put a little rogue one, little tiny one, little bigger one. You can overlap them. You can maybe even put the hint of one up and through here, whatever you want. That's all I'm going to do for that. <laughs> I didn't need to do, I didn't need to do much for my berries. Just kind of, you could if you wanted to, I guess, uh, if you feel like you'd have little red stems, I suppose you could put little lines in there like they're little red stems. Uh, while I have this red on my, this dark, oh no, actually, mm, do I want to use this? Yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of this dark red. I'm going to use a little of this dark red in, um, in my bells. So a little bit in through here, a little bit in through here. So this is the dark red, just kind of adding to this gold type of look. This is still a little wet, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to just kind of introduce a little bit of this reddish tone and I'm doing it in pretty similar areas from one one bell to the next so something like this and I'm doing my color mark in the contour of the bell so I took it and I'm going around and then bringing it down there so this is maybe a little bit more up here and then bring it down here 
So now I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to pick up some white. So washing my brush and I'm going to pick up some white to start a really bright highlight on the right side of my belt. So a little bit of white's going on my brush and I'm going to take this. I'm not going to go right to the edge. I'm going to take it somewhere like in through here and then bring this over to here and kind of splay it out a little bit on the edge of this bell. Something like that. I'm going to do the same thing in through here. I'll get it to blend in a little bit more in a minute, but just kind of getting it splay out. So I'm my, my paint underneath, my gold paint, is still a little wet. So I'm using that right now to kind of allow for a little bit of blending action. You could certainly pick up a little bit of um, the gold also, but right now I think for me, I'm just gonna kind of lay it on here and then I will uh, blend it out in a second here and then maybe splay it out a little bit along this bottom. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my gold on my dirty brush and just kind of get that to blend in a little bit. So you can see as soon as I start adding that gold with the white, it's really taking on a beautiful metallic-y type of look. Picking up a little bit more of my gold, just uh, intermingling it with that white section that I just made. And you can get it to blend out a lot or a little, whatever, whatever works for you. Still have a good amount on my brush, so I'm just gonna kinda ride with it here. Oops, I got something in my paint. Um, and then just bring this down like this. And then I'm going to, that looks pretty neat. Um, I'm going to now wash my brush and I do want a couple of really dark marks on here as well. So I'm washing my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of, uh, black and a touch of water. So black with a little, a touch of water. So I want there to be some, some darkness over here too. So these dark marks are gonna speak to, um, like again, more reflections. So a little bit of black on my brush right now. And I'm doing it in a pretty similar kind of idea and shape that I did everything else. Bring it down here and then kind of uh, splay it across the bottom. Do it over on the other one as well. This one's gonna just kind of this one might just be behind this guy. I'm putting a little bit more water on my brush. And this one's gonna, I'm gonna just make that one go kind of behind it. There we go. And then this one over here, I'll put, you can put it on both sides of the red or just one side, whatever, whatever works for you. Actually, I think I liked it over on both sides something like that, and then just bring it, kind of splay it across the bottom. And I think that is all I'm gonna do for that step. I'm gonna use my number two round brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for the little gold things, <laughs> and we're gonna finish the pine needles. I'm gonna use my number two round brush. The colors I'm going to use are gold, um, green, yellow, white, and that might be it. So I'm going to start with the little gold things. I'm going to use my small brush and these are going to be these guys here. I also need a hook going up to the tree and Actually, then I should probably do my pine needles first. Let me do my pine needles first because the hook to here is going to go over those. All right, so switch gears. I'm going to do my pine needles first. Um, I'm going to first start with a little bit of... Um, mm, actually, I think I want to use some of my light brown too. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light brown because I feel like I could use some of my light brown for the stems of my pine needles. So I have light brown on my brush and I can kind of put a little stem 
in here that will make it look a little bit more believable just down that center maybe that one doesn't have one maybe i got a little bit down in through here that looks good then i'm gonna uh wash my brush i'm gonna pick up green yellow and a touch of white so all three colors on my brush at the same time this is going to allow me to make more of these individual type of um, marks for the pine needles themselves. So you can really make this as dramatic as you want. You can make them longer. You can make them, you know, shorter. I'm going to try and put more of the bright ones kind of on this, what I would think to be is the top or the outside of the um, needles, but you of course can imagine this to be whatever way you want. You don't have to put them exactly on the dark ones that you put the first time. This is, think of these as in addition to, not necessarily exactly right on that first um, pass that you made. So I'm gonna just kind of make some of these longer ones. You can pick up more green, pick up more yellow, whatever you want just to allow for a variety of tones to, um, to be evident here. That's what's where the, um, where the realistic kind of appearance is gonna take place when the viewer can kind of see the different, um, the different tones and values within. Um, I feel like I wanna pick up a tiny bit of black to just get maybe, um, maybe just a couple more little darker pieces in through here uh, probably not necessary but I felt like I could use a little more darkness on some of these so if I felt it I just did it <laughs> and then once I've got that on there I think that that looks pretty good maybe just a little bit more of uh, some kind of lighter tone just to get these little guys in through here any combination of the green, yellow, white with black will will work that out. This in through here just needs little little marks so I can see those a little bit better. And then stick my head back. I like how that looks. So I'm gonna wash my brush and now I'm gonna go to those gold things. So wash my brush, picking up some of that gold color. This I just kind of want to plan out where these are going. I'll add my little highlight and shadow to them on a future step. So I already have these rings in place here. So I'm gonna put uh, these. And of course, you can do whatever kind of decorative element that you want. You could make these just strings. You don't have to have this little loop thing. That's gonna be up to you. And just kind of bringing it back to where I think it would make sense. And then up here, you can just hide these behind this knot if you want to, or you could make like a little additional kind of like mark, if you will, to look like they're in kind of like a little knot or something. And then it's gonna come down and maybe even loop around this little ring so it could get a little thicker where it loops around that ring. So whenever I'm doing stuff like this, this these little decorative elements, I just think of, you know, if I was to see it in person, what would happen? So this would definitely be, you know, looped around this little ring. So I just make it a little bit thicker in through there. So that'll give the illusion of it being looped around. So something like that, and then just bringing it maybe a little thicker in through there. And then I need to have it kind of tying to the tree. So I feel like I want to put maybe a, a ring of sorts uh, tied to the back of my ribbon. So I'm just going to kind of do a little, um, another little kind of loop like that. And then the, um, the hook. I'm going to have my hook coming from above because I feel it needs to be a pretty darn big hook <laughs> because of the weight of these bells. So I'm just going to kind of bring it uh, kind of straight down till it meets here and then hook it and bring it back up 
on the other side. So something like that. And I'll get it to make it look more, more believable uh, with a future step. And I think that is all. Oh, I need my, my actual noise bell things. Can't forget those. So you're going to want to just put these at a at the angle that your bell is at. So this is the angle my bell is at here. So I'm going to give myself a, a, a line that emerges from inside my bell. And then a, probably about halfway down this oval is where I'm going to put my circle. I'm going to put a circle, something like that. And then I overlap it. Ah, I feel like I want that a little lower. Let me put that a little lower. It's a little lower. There we go. I was making it too kind of like ovally shaped. Something like that. And then just color it in with your gold. And again, you could certainly map this out. You could, you know, make it anything you want. I'm going to put a little button on the bottom. And I'll do the same thing for the other one. So again, this one somewhere in through here like this and the bell can be swinging so it doesn't have to be exact but you don't want it looking like it's coming out of the side of the the bell you want it to make sense that it's coming out from there and then maybe something like this try and make the these circles pretty similar in size let me just give myself a quick check here well, that's pretty good and then couple little dots at the bottom dot dot just little decorative things and then my last one here is coming out in this direction so somewhere in through here and then just bring this down and make myself my ball something like that and then I'll give myself a quick check on my measurement give it this little check here that one could be a little bigger and then i'm going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our ribbon and our berries. I'm gonna be using my number two round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are dark red, red, black, and white. And I'm gonna strategically add highlights and shadows to these two elements to make them have dimension. So I'm gonna start with my, um, with my dark stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a little bit of black a touch, and a touch of water on my brush. So black and a touch of water. So on my ribbon here, I want it to look like these ribbons are kind of cinched and that there's kind of a shadow from this to here and that there's also kind of the um, where the ribbon kind of curls over. I want to give some kind of look to that. So I'm going to use black plus a little bit of water on my brush to start this these darker elements so i'm first gonna um start with the little circle part i'm gonna take it from right where these two pieces meet and i'm just gonna kind of cross it over in through here and bring it up into this corner and curve it around and then what i can do is just put a little bit more water on my brush and fade this down. So I just put a little bit of water on my brush and I'm getting this black color to fade into the darkness of that dark red. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So again, black with a little bit of water on my brush, taking it right from here, bringing it up and giving myself a curve around here. I already have water on my brush, so I don't need to add more. But if you need to add more, you certainly can and just fade it down into that dark red. You can also pick up a little bit of the dark red to just make sure that you have a good second coat down in this area. So once you've got that black on there, you can use dark red to just blend that to wherever 
you need it to be. So I'm just putting a little bit of my dark red on my brush to get that to look nice and complete. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more black and water and I'm going to do the same thing to these guys in through here, but they don't need like a total curve, but I definitely need a shadow. So I'm going to take like right in through here where these two meet and I'm going to just kind of bring this down like this and give a little shadow area in through here, maybe even a little shadow area down on this bottom side like that. Then I can again just add a little water to my brush and just get it to blend out. You'll see how this plays out in a minute here. I'm going to pick up another little bit of water and black and I don't need much over here just maybe a little little pocket in through here and then underneath this guy so we can get it to separate and maybe the the upper ribbon is casting a shadow on the side pick up a little bit more water on my brush get that to blend out on the top part i'm going to put a little bit of this darkness right in uh, this little cinched part so i'm using the same i'm going to be using the same technique the whole time i'm picking up a little bit of black with water i put the shadow on where i want it to go so right in through here and then i'm going to use black plus a little bit of water or my dark red, you could use dark red too, to get it to blend out into the main area of the ribbon. So that will help to, uh, right now I'm at putting like these little cinched areas in through here. So again, black plus water. Just putting a little bit more on my brush. I'm gonna get this little area in through here, close that off, and then pull out any little cinched areas that I want. So if I want one there, maybe I want one right here, and maybe this kind of gets shadowed up here, and then put more water on my brush to get that black to just fade out into the dark red. So that looks pretty good. I'm now going to pick up, I uh, wash my brush, I'm gonna pick up some more dark red just to make sure where I want it dark red I don't have streakiness because like in through here I want it dark red but I can still see some streakiness so I'm gonna just use another coat of dark red to make sure that that goes away and to make sure that I have good coverage this is now the time where I would be getting rid of any um, any guidelines so if you have little chalk marks now is the time to get rid of them you can do that with water, you can do it with paint, whatever whatever works for you. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna add some lighter color in through here. So I'm, right now I'm just using the dark red where I want the dark red to be. Um, so I'm gonna have some bright red in through here. I definitely want some more dark red kind of in through here. I'm gonna use bright red here. Uh, let's see here. So this is my dark red. I'm going to use some of this dark red on this end in through here. Like right here as it curls over and then maybe another spot kind of in through here. So again, second coat of dark red I'm using in just strategic areas. You'll see where it, at, you can see how it's getting darker that second coat that I'm putting on. So second coat of red is going on dark red is going on up in through here, kind of in this area. This is going to be really bright over here. I'm going to put a little darkness on the edge like this. I need a little water on my brush to get rid of my chalk mark. There we go. Still into my dark red right now, making sure that I've got over here. Looks nice. Over here, definitely some dark red where it's meeting that uh, black area. That looks nice. Maybe in through here and definitely over here on this left-hand side. And then the, le the rest of the areas that I've got are going to be lit up by my fire red. So I'm res I reserved my fire red till to use in these really bright areas because I wanted to have this bow really shine. So that looks pretty good. I do feel I need some dark red 
at the bottom of this guy. I might even put a little black here, but let's start with just a little dark red down at the bottom and through here. Maybe even a little at the top. That looks nice. Just making sure I've got everything. My dark color, that looks good. So now I'm gonna start employing my red. You don't need to wash my brush because I'm gonna start over here and this side can be is gonna be a little darker than that. So I'm just gonna pick up some of my fire red and I'm gonna put that in through here. And you're gonna see as soon as I start to put this fire red on, how this bow is gonna to start to take shape. So I'm gonna get it to just kind of blend out, pick up a little bit more of my fire red. I can put that in through here. And again, you can certainly do yours in whatever color you want, um, using the same idea of putting varying tones of that color throughout the ribbon. So you could start with a mid to dark tone of whatever. It could be purple, it could be yellow, it could be green, whatever, whatever color you want. Start with that mid tone and then build your way to the darkness and the lightness. So that looks pretty good in through there. Let's kind of bring this up and then just picking. So I'm using just varying tones of that color that I've chosen. So I can use this vibrant red in through here, up and through here. And I do want it to look like it all, you know, belongs together. So I am just kind of making sure that my edge all, you know, all these sections kind of connect. So just be mindful of that as you're doing these little sections of color. Cause I mean, I'm being very free with my brush stroke too. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, blending a lot. I'm just really going for more of a color pattern so I can give the illusion with just these different varying colors um, and sections. So this is a great way to learn how to, to how to paint loosely but to still give it um, a pretty um, realistic effect with um, with the with the shine and the and the form and all the good stuff. Um, I'm gonna let this dry for a minute while this is kind of drying, I'm gonna go do the same thing to my uh, berries and then we'll come back and pop a real bright highlight on it. So I'm washing my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that uh, black with a little bit of water. These of course are smaller, so I don't really need to do um, a whole heck of a lot to them. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little shadow on this bottom um, side to them, a little curve that shadow. Um, I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot of this. I'm gonna wash my brush, then pick up a tiny bit of my dark red, make sure I've got a good second coat on the dark side, which I'm just calling the bottom, <laughs> the bottom portion of them, so something like that. And then I can just pick up my fire red and put that in this upper right hand corner of the berry. So this is gonna be fire red up and through here. So just little pops of that color, fire red fire red and while those are drying we'll come and put the highlight on here so this is going to be red and white so I'm going to pre-mix myself just a little pink tone so red and white makes pink and that's going to that's going to be my my highlight so I've got red and white giving me these little pink kind of marks I can put them wherever that ribbon is kind of popping out the most to the viewer so maybe in through here you can get it to blend in with the, um, the red as well. So my, my fire red is still a little wet um, underneath, so I'm letting it blend right into this highlight. But if you, if you don't want yours to blend in and you want it to be more graphic looking, you can certainly just wait for it to dry and allow, um, just put on a firm kind of mark. I feel like I want a little more red on my brush get this to blend just a little bit more. There we go. That looks cool. And then um, I think I like that pink over here a little bit more. So I'm just gonna give that a little extra brightness and then maybe bring this up a little bit. So these lighter tones are just gonna make these parts of the ribbon pop out a little bit more, something like that. And then maybe just a little bit more in through here. And then you can just kind of keep playing with uh, how bright you want those. If you want a little extra sheen to it, you could put a tiny 
bit of white on it. I don't feel like I want a lot of white on it, so I'm gonna back that off a little bit. <laughs> but if you did want those extra shiny pieces of the ribbon, you can certainly do that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up in the little berry dots, just with a little bit of that pinker tone. And then if I wanted them to shine, I can put just a little, little tiny dot of white. I feel like these could use a little more red too, so I'll pop a little bit more red on those so we can see them better. Um, and then you can certainly fiddle with yours as much as you want. You can get either of these to be brighter or darker or, you know, more contrast, but I'm thinking like I'm, I'm feeling like I'm digging mine, so I'm just going to kind of call it on this one. And we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can, now I'm like, no, I want to play some more. Um, you can wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our bells. I'm going to be using my number two round brush. Uh, I'm going to use a bunch of colors, definitely gold, black, white, yellow, red, and any other colors, I'll let you know. So I think I want to tackle another layer on the smaller things first. While they're drying, we'll go and finish the big shiny parts and then we'll come back and finish those. So I'm going to just hit them with another layer of my gold so I can uh, just make sure I've got a good um, coverage to them before I start adding too many additional details and wishing that I had better coverage. So I think I'm also going to make this one a little, I'm going to shave part of that off with some black in a minute. Um, and again, as you're going through your painting process, just know that nothing has to be cut in stone. This is, it's painting. We, we do this for most of us do it just for some joy. <laughs> some of us do it to, to make a living at it, but a, a lot of us are doing this just for the joyful purposes of creating art. So as you're, as you're going through this, just know you can always make changes. You can always change, you know, morph it into something else. You can always just call it an exercise <laughs> and that you, you're just learning techniques and you don't put the pressure on yourself to, to uh, make it, uh, you know, photorealistic or exactly as somebody else's or, you know, there's never any need to put pressure on yourself when creating art. Um, once you start doing that, it doesn't become as, it's not as fun anymore, <laughs> in my opinion. I think when we can continue to find the joy in it and embrace mistakes or, you know, laugh when it comes to making something that you wanted to look like, you know, a tree, but it ended up looking like a gremlin, you know, just enjoy those, those happy, happy things. Um, I'm going to just, again, I'm just doing another layer with my gold right now because I want to make sure that I have a good um, layer on these little objects. I will often do multiple layers for this specific reason and sometimes it's of the same color just two times in a row. When I do backgrounds, a lot of times I'm doing two layers, especially if it's like a flat color. Unless I know I'm really, it's, you know, it's going to be okay that um, if I don't have that, you know, nice solid base, but for something like this, I know I want a lot of this gold to show through. So for me, it's, it's pretty important to just make sure that I have this, um, this layer nice and solidified. So that looks good. While, that's, while those are drying, now I go and finish my shiny parts. So I'm going to wash my brush. I do want to make sure this is the time again. I'm on my last kind of pass, so I'm going to make sure that I get rid of all of my chalk marks. Um, and I want to add more color in here. So I think I want to add some, some like vibrancy, some yellow and red tones. So I'm actually going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint with water on my brush. So white and water. And I want to have um, some shiny marks. So I'm going to put like these light 
tones and you'll see how these play out in a minute but I'm going to put like a light area I'm going to kind of soften the edges so I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel while this is still wet I'm just going to kind of fade it out into the neighboring paint I'm going to do the same thing over um, on the third bell so white with water just a little bit you don't need much and just kind of give yourself this little kind of light area. We're gonna put color on top of this. I just want to uh, kind of lighten the tone of these areas. So we're gonna put a shine on them. I'm gonna do the same thing on the main uh, area of the bell. So white plus dirty water. Because <laughs> um, I want to have like these bright little pops. So I definitely want maybe something um, kind of down the center white plus water and just kind of fade it out it doesn't need to be um, a solid mark it's just something where I want that canvas to be a little bit toned a little bit lighter so I'm going to do the same thing over here so the water on my brush is helping me to just kind of spread it out I'm using the belly of the the bristles so I'm just getting it to spread out I'm going to do this over on this right hand side maybe somewhere in through here. There we go. And then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put a real uh, bright area with just white on top of this guy right in through here. So this is just uh, no water, this time just white. And I can also, again, kind of splay this out down in through here. And again, I'm not going for photorealistic here, so don't um, don't feel the need to get this perfect blend. I'm really going rough with mine. Um, you can, again, if you felt that yours needed to be a little more smooth, you could certainly do that, but I am definitely allowing for just a really soft kind of impressionistic look to this um, to take, again, the pressure off and to allow it to just be fun and enjoy the process. So something like this and then that brightness in through here and I can start to add my little additional colors. I'm going to pick up a, um, some of that gold and make sure this left edge is all complete so I can see some of my chalk mark. So I'm just going to allow myself to add a little bit of gold on there. You can also start um, adding colors from the surrounding. So I'm just right now going around my edges with gold to make sure that I have them complete. If you felt that you wanted to see a little gold edge down at the bottom, you could also pull this gold right along the bottom of your black if you wanted to. That's totally up to you. It might be a neat accent, but not necessary. I'm just going for making sure my chalk mark is gone. So something like this is working and then once I've got my chalk mark all gone and my edges are the way that I want them I'm going to start adding some awesome color and then we'll hit those little pieces so this is just gold finishing up these edges getting my um, chalk to go away and my bells are growing as we speak which is totally fine. There we go. And then I'm going to bring this around the edge. Um, I'm going to just bring this around this edge in through here. So I can get rid of this chalk, but I feel like this chalk on this one, I might want to, if I go all the way to it, it's going to be too big so I'm just gonna leave that so that's good now that I've got that I am gonna go and um, I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm actually gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and red so yellow and red and I want some kind of bright highlights or reflections so whatever you do on one try and put it on the other in a similar spot so I had yellow and red there there and then maybe I put it over here 
and they don't it doesn't have to be you know the same exact but allowing yourself to um, put these vibrant reflections is it is pretty cool <laughs> I'm gonna put this red and uh, yellow somewhere in through here so red and yellow and these this is gonna be more like just streaking the colors down um, to make it look like they are reflecting from uh, somewhere and they are just kind of creating the shine on here. I also am going to put a little bit of this right um, inside the bell in through here. So this is red and yellow on my brush. Red and yellow. Red and yellow. And about equal parts of those two colors. Red and yellow. And I'm just rubbing it on top of that black through there. Over on this left side as soon as I put this on top of this white, watch what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be really bright now. So there goes a nice bright tone right in that mix. So that's why I wanted to put that color, that light tone underneath there to get to achieve that brightness. So white and red now on top of this is going to make that area look really bright. So if I had that black underneath there, it wouldn't have um, shown up so bright. So that's just a little tip um, when you're doing stuff like this if you do want to have those uh, neat effects of lighter colors underneath just adding that bit of um, lighter value under it will help to make it shine brighter. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black right now to close off or to put a shadow on this little bell thing right there and there a little bit more black touch of water on my brush to close this off in through here and then I'm going to use a little bit of water and black to create some little shadows on those smaller objects and then um, I'm going to come back in a minute and get these to be finished too so I have black and water on my brush and I'm just looking for little like shadowy marks so uh, this one's going to come in front of that and then maybe has a little shadow underneath here maybe this has a little shadow at the bottom little shadow at the bottom. So again, just using my, my thought process of the shadow is going to be on the bottom of these objects or like nesting on the sides of them. That'll help them pop out just a little bit. Same thing with this little guy right here. So just put a little shadow there, maybe a little shadow there. And then at the bottom side of this ring, like that. And then these little guys coming down here, you could spiral them if you want to. You could braid them. I just feel like I'm going to just have like long, light, um, gold, stringy things. But I'm going to put a little bit of shadow up in here, make it look like there's a little knot or something. And maybe a little shadow underneath that ribbon, something like that. And then up here on this one, just a little shadow underneath that and a little shadow underneath my hook and then maybe just a little streak down that. That looks cool. Down on my little guys down the uh, bells down here. I'm going to put some shadow down at the bottom side and underneath these little bells, these little, uh, uh, little things I put at the bottom. These little decorative pieces. So just a little black is uh, what I'm using to put these uh, marks on looks good and then I'm gonna um, wash my brush and I'm gonna put mm, I'm gonna put yellow and white on my brush so yellow and white and I'm gonna put that down this left area in through here so this is yellow and white get it to go over here a little bit more yellow. My yellow is going to be more transparent than my white. So the yellow will, um, I can use that. In con I'm going to also pick up a little gold right now. Get this to blend in just a little bit in through here. Um, so if you use just yellow, it would be really transparent. But if I use it with the white, it, that will help to get it to um, be ha more opaque. So that looks good in through there. I'm going to do the same thing on the next one. You could always start with yellow if you wanted to. Get it to blend out. 
and then put a little bit of the yellow and the white in the center. Up to you, however bright you want it to be. Again, I'm just having fun with these colors. I'm going to enjoy putting my head back on this one. It's hard when I'm sitting there this close. I'm like, does it look good yet? <laughs> but when I, when I step back, it's like, okay, everything I wanted to do works out just fine. But it's tough when I'm, when I'm sitting this so close to it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and white. Just get this to shine a little bit brighter in the center. And then that looks pretty good. Get that. And then these little gold like pops that I did in through here, I can do that on these guys too. I'm going to just pick up a little bit of red. I'm going to pop a little red on the left, red on the left, red on the left. I need a little more than that. Red. I'm going to pick up some yellow. I'm just going to kind of probably um, get these to have just this nice bright shine to them, pulling this up just a little bit more to the right. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gold and white and just put a nice kind of bright spot, gold and white, gold and white in through here. You can also put a little streak down this little piece. And, you know, I'm kind of just flying through mine, but you can certainly, you know, spend as much time as you want on this. I'm just, you know, allowing for the freedom and, you know, just enjoy the process. But if you, if you find that you want to explore, you know, getting these really perfect and um, fully blended and uh, everything, you know, really sparkly and stuff like that, you can certainly do that. I'm just um, giving you the tools to know how to get them on here, give them a little bit of dimension with um, these highlights and shadows, give them some shine with the reflections, um, and then you can take it as far as you want. You can, you can keep building and keep getting those layers to be more uh, smooth and soft and more reflections and you know all those little things that that you you can do to these type of paintings especially if you're doing it with a shiny object I'm going to use my gold and white to travel up into these guys right now and put some little highlights on these guys with gold and white if you wanted it to look more brassy you could use a little bit of a more orange tone as you're as you're creating these little um, highlights and stuff and just these little streaks of highlights throughout that I'm picking up more gold and white give myself this nice little shine to this upper piece and some pieces might sparkle more than others so you can just kind of pop a little little extra bright white on certain areas and that'll get them to shine just a teeny bit more. I could even make sure that I have uh, extra, oh, that, there was some yellow on my brush, hold on. I was gonna say, use some nice clean white if I can find any and put like a nice, you know, bright spot, maybe somewhere up, oh, my brush is so dirty. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, just do that bright white, but I'm not having success. So I'm gonna make sure my brush is clean and then try go one more time into some nice clean white, maybe. Let's see if I can get some here. You can put a nice bright, there we go, a little bright highlight right on this edge here, maybe up on this little corner here. And then you just fiddle with it at, at this point. Once you've got these colors on here, you can certainly make them more or less, whatever you want. And then we're gonna be using uh, this same brush for the next step. If you have trouble spots, like over here, I can't see the corner here, I could just add a little bit of, of black around the edge. So you can certainly, um, or a little bit of maybe yellow and white, if you need little areas to, to, to sparkle a little bit more because you can't see them, you need more contrast on them, you can certainly just add little streaks of white here and there. That'll, that'll do the trick. And then you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. 
This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I think I'm going lower left on this one with, um, I'm going to go with black today. Black with a little bit of water. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can make up a fun symbol, you can sign it on the back, you can hide it in your painting, whatever you want. It's up to you because it's your painting and you get to identify it however you would like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a nice holiday decorative inspired image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.